Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Welcome to our virtual live demonstration uh, legal show tonsillectomy. My name is Dr. Siti Halimah Tunsahab, one of the ENT surgeon in Hospital Pakar Sultana Fatimah Mua. As we know, tonsillectomy is one of the commonest surgical procedure in general ORL practice. There's been a lot of change in the indications and also surgical techniques for the past few years. The question is, which is the best method of tonsillectomy with minimum complication? That is something that I cannot answer because each and every surgeon will have their own preference. So in Hospital Pakar Sultana Fatima, for the past three years, um, we have seen a slight decrease in the number of cases of tonsillectomy uh, due to COVID-19 when the pandemic pandemic uh, hit us uh, in 2020, uh, we found that um, most of our OTs are uh, being cancelled and also being postponed. Okay, uh, In 2018, we have about 118 cases. Uh, in 2019, almost the same, about uh, 110. But in 2020, the number of cases was half uh, reduced. Um, majority of our patients who underwent uh, tonsillectomy in 2018 were mostly uh, patients aged more than 12. However, in 2019 and 2020, majority were pediatric patients aged less than 12 years old. Um, for indication, uh, for tonsillectomy in hospital MOA, majority were, ton were recurrent tonsillitis, uh, followed by obstructive symptoms, um, whereby enlarged tonsil causing obstructive sleep apnea or even uh, sleep disordered breathing. Next will be chronic tonsillitis and we have small number of patients presented with unilateral tonsillar hypertrophy uh, whereby they need to undergo this um, diagnostic tonsillectomy for biopsy purposes. Back to the question, which is the best method for tonsillectomy? Uh, in hospital MOA, when we have new MOs coming in, we will teach them the conventional way, the traditional way by using the cold steel method. Uh, we will make sure that they will uh, graduate from this. Next, we will allow them to use bipolar as the main tool for tonsillectomy. Once they master it, then only we will um, allow them to use this ligature and also harmonic couple. Unfortunately, in MOA, we don't have coblator, so we don't use coblator technique uh, for tonsillectomy. There are other various methods uh, such as laser. But in the end, the best method will rely on the surgeon. So we have to be open to other techniques. Um, try other techniques um, so that we can uh, have our own um, way of doing tonsillectomy with a minimum complication. Uh, there's one study that I want to share with you guys. Um, a study published in 2017 in Indian Journal of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery, whereby they compare various techniques of tonsillectomies uh, and its changing trend. They look into various um, techniques, uh, namely cold, ma cold method, uh, microdebrider, laser. Uh, electrodissection, coblator, uh, and also radiofrequency. There were comparable operating time um, for tonsillectomy uh, in various um, techniques. Yeah? Not very much of a difference in the operating time. Uh, however, there, were, there, there are significant uh, findings in the uh, perioperative uh, bleeding, whereby... Um, in cool methods, they found that there's a lot of uh, bleeding intraoperatively, um, but less bleeding in other techniques uh, like uh, coblation, electro section, and even laser. Uh, our experience using Ligasure uh, as the tool for tonsillectomy in hospital MOA, um, we found that um, we need less instrument. Um, to be used. Um, in tonsillectomy, we need to open the whole tonsillectomy set. However, when we use the Geshua, 
we don't need to remove a, uh, a lot of instruments out of it. We only need a few, namely uh, boiled babies, mouth gag, then we need uh, our Danish brown, then trapping by pot, uh, we need our pillar retractor, and also uh, pickups. Apart from that, the other instruments, we don't need, even need to uh, remove it out from the set. Uh, then we need our uh, ligature handpiece for sure. Um, to assemble the handpiece is very easy. We just have to plug it in. But I would recommend uh, to hold the handpiece uh, using your three fingers, uh, which is your a middle finger, ring finger, and also your uh, little finger. You use your index finger to um, move the blade around and also to pull the trigger. Um, I think using this um, technique, uh, you will feel less pain uh, when you use the uh, handpiece. And when we first, we have to uh, clamp. The vessel first because we need to seal whatever vessels or tissue then only we cut the cut is very clean uh, in the video it will show you that uh, we we demonstrate that we cut uh, a piece of a uh, wet gauze so you'll see a lot of vapor coming out but in real uh, surgery there won't be any smoke or vapor uh, coming out from the uh, device itself um, this um, slide is a fast uh, forward slide uh, showing how we use uh, ligature uh, technique for tonsillectomy. We only need um, the tonsil holder and also uh, ligature. As you can see, I hope you can appreciate that there's not very much of bleeding. Uh, there's no charring, not very much of smoke uh, that came out from the device. And also, there's no uh, edema because uh, there will be less uh, lateral thermal damage. Yeah? So, what we like um, the most about ligature uh, as a tool for tonsillectomy. Number one, less bleeding. Because of the effective uh, vessel sealing and tissue sealing and also precise cutting, um, we found that less bleeding. Uh, in the surgical field and because of this um, precise cutting and also sealing there's not very much of charring and also lateral thermal damage there's uh, no edema and our patient experience less pain majority of our patient will say that their pain score is about three uh, post-operatively and they'll be able to tolerate orally uh, directly post-op and they can be discharged the day after uh, with minimum analgesia. And once you get the hang of it, you will find that the surgery is very fast compared to other techniques. Um, another study that I would like to share a study on ligature uh, versus um, coal methods. Okay. Um, in this study, they found that um, by using ligature, the mean operative time can be reduced from um, 13 to about 20 as compared to coal instrument where the mean operating time is about 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, in ligature, there will be a less uh, post-operative uh, hemorrhage compared to coal uh, method. And also in ligature, the pain score uh, was about three compared to uh, coal method was about five. Um, so in conclusion, um, ligature um, have more advantage uh, compared to the conventional method. So what are the cons? We found that uh, for uh, first handler or first time user of this ligature, um, they will feel discomfort to the hand. So, they will, because we have to pull the trigger in order for us to cut. Uh, unlike the other um, device that we use in our hospital, 
they we can just um hemostasis and cut at the same time but by using this we have to seal first then only we cut for a first time user they will find that the hands are a bit sore after uh, first time using it uh, next will be the bulkiness of the design initially when we started using uh, ligature we use um, precise um, and precise is a shorter and a bit difficult to manipulate. Then we move on to Maryland. With Maryland, we found that it is better, but we still find it is a bit bulky to be used in smaller kits. Um, even though this um, ligature have a good uh, vessel sealing uh, property, we found that it's a bit difficult to secure bleeding in raw areas at the tonsilla bed. Sometimes we have to use um, bipolar to enhance the hemostasis to prevent uh, secondary hemorrhage. Uh, this article um, compare ligature to diatomy scissors tonsillectomy. Um, there's not very much of a difference between post-operative uh, hemorrhage pain score and also um, mean operative time. Uh, however, we don't have a diatomy scissors here, uh, but this study claimed that there's not very much of a difference uh, between the two techniques. Um, the next few slides, uh, I will share you what, how the tonsillar bed looks like Okay, after each technique of tonsillectomy. Uh, this picture shows you the before and after uh, surgery using cold steel uh, tonsillectomy. You can appreciate that the right tonsilla bed looks charred, okay, totally charred. Because if you use cold method, we have to use uh, diatomy to hemostasis, uh, for hemostasis. So there will be a lot of charring. Definitely patient will experience pain and also edema. Then patient will not eat. Um, that much postoperatively, which can lead to post-op hemorrhage. Uh, for harmonic scalpel, um, it is faster compared to cold steel. However, the charring is still there. Um, because of the charring, pain, patient will experience pain and also edema postoperatively. Um, comparing to ligature, we found that by using the gesture, there will be less bleeding. Um, so your surgical feel is fairly clean. And I hope you can um, see there's not very much of uh, what you call that charring over the tonsilla bed. And because of this, uh, less lateral thermal damage, edema also will be less. The uvula will not so edematous uh, post-operatively. So patient can eat tolerate. Uh, can tolerate already very well, so can be discharged the following day. So in conclusion, uh, no matter what techniques that you use, the most important thing in tonsillectomy will be the post-op uh, monitoring of patient. Uh, ENT surgeons or ENT MOs, please be open to try other methods because uh, we have to experience using other techniques for us to develop our own uh, methods uh, of tonsillectomy that works, okay? And once you have something that works, by means that, you know, fast, good, um, uh, what you call that, good post-op um, con pain control and also less bleeding, then stick with it. I hope you will enjoy the rest of the live uh, demonstration and I hope you find the course um, uh, educational and I hope you can try other techniques of tonsillectomy, especially ligature for those who haven't uh, tried before. Uh, with that, I thank you.